this. Welcome to this episode of the Wireless Weekly, part of the LTG Network. Wireless Weekly is brought to you by Audible.com. Get your free audiobook trial at audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. This is the show where we talk about mobile tech news, updates, and innovations. I'm your host, Mr. Tony Hannity's, and I have with me this evening Mr. Sean Wilburn. How are you doing, Sean? I'm doing well, Mr. Hannity's, and yourself? I am good, Mr. Sean Wilbur. <laughs> I don't know why I introduced myself as Mr. Tony Hamm. I know. I'm thinking like you're about to teach us or something. It's like it's, it's class, sit down. Everybody sit down. I am Mr. Tony Hannity's. You can call me Mr. Tony Hannity's. <laughs> you, you get your uh, third person in the whole show. Did your parents sign the permission slips to be taught this subject of tech news? Ooh, you thought I was going to say something else. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Well, before we uh, go on with our... Uh, humorous uh, stuff. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, let our listeners and viewers know how they can get in contact with us. Many with different ways, but best would be either email us at comments at lazytechguys.com or call us at 707-722-5299. And as you can see below, we are on all the major social networks as well as some of the non-major social networks except for MySpace. We're not on that, so don't go try to find us there. Hmm. Why, hmm. Would do that? Why would we do that to MySpace? Sorry, Justin Timberlake. We don't like it. Okay, but oh. no, we like you. You're good. Yeah. You're a good musician. Suit and tie. I don't know how song goes. Suit like and tie. Is it song. Tux, that was a tuxedo and like bow tie or something or something like that. <laughs> He's a good musician. You know. All right. Well, before we roll into the whole top news and everything, so Sean can hit the button for the awesome top news music. Uh, there are three announcements that I want to uh, bring up. One, two of them are kind of late. So one is uh, we do want to uh, wish all of the uh, members of the armed forces a happy m memorial weekend or memorial day. Uh, you know, we couldn't do what we're doing right now if it wasn't for the sacrifices that you've done in the past and what you are doing for us right now. So thank you very much. Um, also, it is... Damn it, dude! I knew Sean's I was like, I was birthday like, yesterday. Are you gonna seriously? <laughs> yeah. So this is me saying happy birthday in three seconds. Happy birthday, dude! Okay. You're it. Yeah. Thank so you. he's he's 18 now, yeah. ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm legal. There you go. And um, uh, so yeah. Yeah, hope, Tony, yeah of course, man. Definitely hope you enjoyed your day off yesterday. And uh, last but not least, we've got another giveaway. I know, right? That's Wait, crazy. Why do, I don't have any kind of. Oh, well, what? Okay, but Tony, what are we giving away? This, not what a phone, it? not the phone. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was giving away the phone, yeah, didn't actually, you? I, at, I was looking at you like, really? I'm like, dude, what do I need to do to get this contest? <laughs> I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be just like so people know. Okay, what is that case for? Okay, so the case is for the Galaxy S4. And there's a Galaxy S4. And, I, and it's on the Galaxy S4 in my hand. So I, I brought it to the, the camera, and I said, this is what we're giving away, and uh, it's not the phone. It's the case. Excuse me? <laughs> How did you get the Galaxy S3 last year, Mr. Yeah, you can't I complain kidding. about anything? I kidding. I thought you were going to flaunt it. What are we giving away? This. Like, I'm sure everybody who saw that is like, what? They're already no. signing up. They're already queuing up. And I'm like, slow down, guys. Slow down. Tony's just a tease. Okay, so we've actually just spoke with the, with the company behind this case. This case is from Tech21. They do cases for Galaxy Nose, Galaxy S3, Galaxy S4. Uh, the iPhone, and uh, what really sets this case apart from others is that even though it's nice and thin, uh, this material around it, which is this orange m uh, material called D3O, is super absorbent. So through um, a myriad of uh, different drop tests that they've done, that we've done, um, I, I put a lot of uh, faith in this case, uh, so much so that, um, like I said, this is a Galaxy S4. That's me dropping the Galaxy S4 because the case, the case works. And so we're giving away three of them, and they're all for the Galaxy S4. And so if you don't have a Galaxy S4, go get one. <laughs> they don't work for the not, S3? Not from us. <laughs> it, it doesn't work for the S3? It does not work for the S3. Uh, wait, there is a slight change. Where is that? 
That's just for people like me. Yeah. Well, there's a slight change in, in, in the how it's the, how it's designed. But in any case, uh, the three cases that we have from Tech 21 is um, one is called the uh, Impact Mesh. Actually, they're all called Impact Mesh. It's just the um, the design. It's these little dots. And I'll have big better pictures on our website showing you exactly what you're going to win. But yeah, we have one that's Impact Mesh in white, and then two more Impact Mesh in black. So. Yeah, to, to win uh, the case, uh, it's going to be an ongoing contest for the next week or so. And so to win the case, all you have to do is, uh, what do you think, Sean? You know, I, I make up these on, on my own a lot of the times, and I, and I kind of lose, uh, I, I run out of ideas. So do you have anything that you might no. think that would be enticing to people to try to win this case? Well, my problem is anything I think I come up with has to do with my car being washed and things like that. So I'd be better <laughs> off not coming up with any ideas on this situation. I tell you, if we have a listener or viewer that goes over to your work tomorrow <laughs> and starts washing your car, you're going to be I, like, you know, Tony, give this guy a, a freaking I, case I right would, now. I would. Or a set of guitar strings. Yeah. And have like, here, dude, just, you don't play, fine, just take them anyway. So if you don't if you don't plan on uh, if like I said if you don't have a uh, Galaxy S4 uh, they do have cases for different phones so if you want to go out and look at them uh, T-Mobile in their corporate locations has a um, small um, but uh, plentiful array of different uh, Tech 21 Impactology cases as well as uh, different Apple stores so uh, go ahead and try them out for yourself they are actually uh, very easy to open packaging and uh, you can try it out. And see what your uh, device looks like inside of them. So yeah, good luck to you all. And um, the full instructions and everything will be on LazyTechGuys.com tomorrow at ten o'clock after this podcast has been uh, has been published for you. you. Know, after he figures out exactly how he's going to do it. Shut up. Well, if you have, come on, you already knew that if you're listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, cool. We'll update the notes on the YouTube channel to make sure people know that too. So if you're watching this, yes, we will make sure you know. You have I, I, I want to do a caption this thing, but no one seemed to want to be creative. They just say, ah, it's a penguin. Yeah, it's a penguin doing what? I don't know, it's a penguin. Okay, you're not funny. All right. Let's go ahead and talk about our <laughs> let's go ahead and talk about our tap headlines for the week. All right, and Google is building a wireless network. Not here in the United States, but they're building it somewhere. We'll let you guys know where that's at. Agent is not an agent inspector, but it is the Kickstarter's latest smartwatch, and it's a huge home run. C Spire has expanded their 4G LTE markets. LG has announced a new Nexus 4, but they won't be announced in a Nexus 5. Mozilla and Foxconn has a new device that will be announced on June 3rd. And finally, Samsung is poised to host an event on June 20th for both Android and Windows Phone 8. But before we go ahead and move on to that, we do want to thank our sponsor of the Wireless Weekly and the LTG Network. So thank you very much, Audible.com. Uh, the Audible.com is the one of the best places to get audiobooks. And the guys over at Audible.com, a.k.a. Amazon, are going to give you listeners and viewers and watchers and readers an awesome trial base for um, for just checking it out. So if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash lazy, you will have your hand at over 100,000 different audiobooks on hand from fiction to nonfiction, science fiction, historical nonfiction, biographies, autobiographies, biographies about autobiographies. I mean, there's a, there's a ton of different things that's on there. So... Um, yeah, if you don't have time to read a book, but you do want to get caught up with, like, I don't know, The Hunger Games or something like that, um, or uh, one of the big ones, I guess, right now would be, uh, what's that thing on HBO, uh, Game of Thrones. I just learned that the Game of Thrones books, that Game of Thrones is just the first book. The whole series is actually something completely different. So that's what I learned, but I don't have time to read. So Audible.com is uh, the best choice for me to be able to get... Uh, you know, in, get information on all these new cool books, and sometimes they're actually read by the author themselves. So, yeah, like I said, go to audibletrial.com/lazy. They have mobile uh, mobile apps on iOS, Android, and Windows Phone, 
and we thank them for being a sponsor of the Wireless Weekly. <laughs> well, that also means that Audible.com will also stay you, keep you be hip. You can be more hip with Audible.com. Well, yeah. dude, yeah. you got to be hip. We live in the Bay Area, so it's kind of a prerequisite. Like before you even move in, it's on the DMV form. Like, are you hip? Oh, I don't know. I think yeah. so. Yeah, you, you have plans to, to be hip. Well, what yeah, of course hip? I do. What is hip? No, what is hip? <laughs> I don't know. Tell me, tell me. I just need to know. Ironically, <laughs> hip is not be, not consciously being hip. Is that what is hip? Well, it's That's one of those. Power said, I don't know. <laughs> <it's> what... <laughs> and they are performing at the Solano County Fairgrounds. Yeah, and. They're, those guys are cool. All yeah. right, so um, what is that here I was going to say? Oh, one last thing about Audible.com. So one book that I actually do like on there is called Ready Player One on there. I did check it out on the uh, service. Um, it's funny how I've actually – I watched the entire book, and as I'm in video game world and I listen to people talk, a lot of people bring that book up all the time. And I know that they're supposed to be trying to make a movie out of, out of it also. So it's just a pretty cool idea, pretty cool thing they got going on. And, um, yeah, in Audible.com inadvertently brought me some knowledge that I hear about in – kind of underground gaming culture. So yeah, there's a lot of cool things about that. I just want to put that out there. But you know what? We're going to start talking about something else. We're going to start with Google today. Google is actually doing something that, well, it's actually kind of cool. So you know that the company has been trying to, has rolled out wireless technology in Kansas as well as uh, other parts of the United States. Well, it looks like they got a plan to bring internet to two parts of the world that we didn't think of. Well, at least here in America, um, sub the sub sub Saharan sub Saharan Africa, which means South of the Sahara, and Southeast Asia, both places that are very very void of internet access. So, what they're planning on doing is they're trying to work a way, trying to work a way of getting billions of people online and bringing them to the web and well, giving them access to the knowledge and information that they didn't have available. Now. They're still at works with the deal with uh, countries like uh, South Africa and Kenya. So there's a lot of work to be done, a lot of stuff to happen needs to happen. But it is a very, very intriguing plan that they're actually doing this. And just so people understand, I think they're trying to do some things where they want to lift like balloons in the sky and have those kind of relay. It sounds like the Wi-Fi signal or something like that. So, um, so Tony, what do you think of like Google? I mean, are they? I mean, this is a pretty ambitious move they got going on here. I mean, this is a huge move for Google. I think um, this would uh, be a really nice um, as a company to give back. Um, I, they didn't mention if it would be a free network, though, so I don't know how that would work out. But it is, you know, they are probably one of the, uh, if this is a real thing, because obviously at this point Google hasn't made any kind of comments about it. Um, but it, it would be one of, the, one of the biggest moves that a company like Google has made to help under, underdeveloped communities, um, you know, get Internet. Like for fiber, for example, you know, that's, like you were saying, it's in Kansas City. Um, but one of the biggest things about fiber is that if you are not in the position to be able to pay for Internet through some sort of review, Google would actually offer you fiber for free. So they're, they really do want to give Internet to people who truly can't afford it. And um, we also saw Google at Google I.O. really push forward that they're really trying to implement more educational tools, and this would really help out, educate those people in you know, Kenya and uh, I guess the Congo and you know, South, South, uh, South Africa um, who wouldn't normally be able to have access to the web? So, do you I, think? Oh, good. What's it? No, I, I I applaud them on it. I just don't know what the logistics are going to be, because maybe there's there's obviously a reason you know, why, other than just they don't have the money. There there's also a reason why you know certain governments don't want to empower their own uh, their own people with the knowledge that's out there on the web. You know, you go to the wrong website that teaches you all this stuff that's happening about your country that you didn't know about. Um, do you remember that whole kind of uh, ad campaign last year about Coney? Do you remember uh, that? 
there's more than that. Like besides the Coney ad, I mean that every with all the stuff that's currently going on in the Middle East and that entire area, Twitter has already been a major issue with it because every time something comes out, like they try to keep information, like yeah, they try to keep information known. I mean, it's not. I'm not saying our government's any better. Cause they any better? The no, thing. not at all. No, they, yeah. they, they, they just try do to it do differently. The same thing. And that's yeah. all countries do this. They want to keep certain information under wraps. And well, the internet has changed that. And like, and there are a lot of countries who don't yeah. like that. So and I mean, like, like if you take. China, for example, you know, if you go, if you are, if you're in China and you search for something through Google or even just on your URL bar, you it just it won't let you. You've got the whole, you know, the Great Firewall of China, and so if they were to do something similar to that in Africa, it might be understandable. They might not like it, but at least they have some access to something that they wouldn't have access to, you know, before him. I was just thinking that Google is very smart. They just realized that there is a billion customers down there who they have no chance of shoot, shooting ads to, and at now they finally had a chance to shoot them ads. Yeah. Yeah, but, and then make them loyal. I mean, seriously, like, what that's what, do, I mean, what are they going to do with the ads? I don't know. I'm what sorry. Ads, I was thinking that too. I was like, I don't know what ads they do, but what I assure ads you this they much. Put? I assure you this much. There are enough local businesses. I'm sure they have local over. businesses oh, there be some business there. out there. And say, Would you guys want to advertise? It only costs you this much. And, like, and then all these people have advertised and they'll know where your business is. Like, heck yeah. Boom. Yeah. Here's whatever <laughs> money sure. they use currency in that country. Here, take it. Yeah. <laughs> Just put me out there and tell everybody where I'm located and come hang out here. It's funny about ads because I was doing a review of a Galaxy S3 case this mm -hmm. morning and I gave it a two out of five stars and then I went on Facebook and one of these side ads was for the case. I'm like, nah, don't give me an ad for a case that I don't recommend to anybody. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, well, thank you for... I, I, yeah. applaud, I applaud Google also. As please. we both do. Google, golf clap, round of applause. Yeah. Good job. Hang on a second here. Wait, wait, wait. Not that much, but we get the idea. Yeah. All right. I'm a huge proponent of, of, uh, of Kickstarter and especially wearable technology. I don't have Google Glass, but I did try it out like two oh, weeks yeah. ago when I visited Twit, and I, I think I'm going to buy it. Just, ah, just, yeah, you sucker. Well, you know yeah. what? What do you think this price is going to be for that thing when it really comes probably, out? Probably maybe like still like 800 900 no, you don't think I'm, so? I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be three. I really? really? I think it's going to be three hundred bucks. All right, all right. I think they're going to. I think they're going to. I thought they. I think they brought it up to five fifteen hundred dollars, thinking that that would dissuade most people from wanting to buy it. And apparently, that didn't work. <laughs> and now, <laughs> it's, now they're. Dang it! But when, I think people want to crap. Because <laughs> when I was listening to some one of the other folks talk about, it, they said it isn't really a big super high tech piece of gear and the equipment isn't this really expensive. Like if they sell it for eight hundred, that's like a three point margin of what that thing probably costs to make. I mean I don't know. It seems to be a frame and a some piece of electronics. Well next time you um, go by the, the, the brick house, just yeah, just try out Jason's just to see what it's like. But anyways, Jason let him try it out. Be nice. Um, but anyways, I mean yeah I'm a I'm a big big supporter and um, I guess a believer to a certain degree of wearable technology. Yeah. I myself have a, have a smartwatch by Cuckoo, and uh, it connects to my smartphone, and I get notifications of um, like weather and when I get a uh, when I get a tweet or a Facebook update. I can I can actually um, I can actually use the watch to um, to take a picture on my phone. So it's kind of cool. It's like a remote uh, shutter. For, um, but yeah, there's another. Uh, Kickstarter project that's going on right now, and this one's called Agent. And Agent, it, it um, it's it, it's pretty much the same concept of the other different Kickstarter watches that are out there. But what's really nice about this, uh, right out of the gate, it's going to work for Windows Phone, which the other ones haven't done in the past. Uh, so Rad would be happy about that. Hmm. And obviously, it's going to work for uh, Android and iOS. Um, it has two processors. So unlike some of the other Kickstarter watches like that would last for maybe a day or two, or the one that I have lasts for, for a year, but it's very, very basic, minimal, minimalist kind of smartwatch. This one is an e-ink watch that has different apps. It has, you know, tells you when you've walked too far away from your phone. Um, it, you know, there you, you can do GPS things on there. Like I said, calendar invites, um, you know, let you know who's calling you. You can... You know, um, I don't think it has a touch screen. It has all the buttons on on the right hand side of it, um, and it has a leather wrist strap. So um, if if you're more into like the metal kind of wrist strap, you might be able to remove the the face and you know pop it in the metal wrist strap. But um, if you see on the screen here on my screen, yes, there we go. 
uh, yeah, this is just a video from the Kickstarter project that you could find uh, directly at kickstarter.com uh, under agent. And um, it looks to be a really um, very nice watch. Now, they were hoping to get a goal of 100000 And by the time that I wrote the article, they, they had already doubled that. Uh, which is, if you know your math, is 200,000. Right now, they're at 700,000. So there's no doubt in their mind that this watch is going to be built. Now what it comes down to, obviously, is getting it built on time. So um, hopefully the, um, the machining and the tooling for the watch is going to be a lot faster than it was for Cuckoo and for, uh, for Pebble. I know there were some delays with that. Um, also, the watch itself... It, it can be charged through a chi or qui? How do they pronounce it? What do they say? How's it spelled? Uh, here we go. The qi. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, pronounced chi right here. There you go. It's pronounced chi. Anyways, it, it, it can be um, charged wow. through a wireless charger pad. So instead of having to plug it in through a dock or something like that, you just put it on the wireless charging pad, and it charges through that. Um, hmm. They offer the the Qi charger pad through them if you purchase um, the more higher tier pledge, but you can buy your own through Energizer, JBL, Nexus, Nokia. They all work. Um, but yeah, th there's a um, there's a whole kind of basis for different apps and everything you know, built in the built in C plus plus. So. Um, if you're into uh, into app building and things like that, and you want to build your app for a, for a smartwatch, this might be it. Like I said, it's uh, got a dual core Cortex M4 processor, um, 1.28 inch memory display, anti glare lens, Bluetooth 4.0 with uh, low energy, three axis accelerometer, ambient light sensor, vib vibration motor. Um, that, that was the one big thing for me. When someone texts me or emails me or whatever, if I have my smartwatch and I have my phone in my pocket, my watch will vibrate, and I'm more likely to feel my watch vibrate to let me know something you know, came to my phone versus you know, feeling the vibration on my leg. Because sometimes when I'm walking, I don't feel the vibration because the movement of my leg overpowers the vibration because I, I walk so heavy. I don't know. But yeah. <laughs> when you're talking about the vibrations of your legs and things not vibrating right then, I'm just like, mm. <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to support. I'm trying to replace the word cheese and cheat and everything with QI. I'm like, I see that cheese those change. I'm like, I don't like change. Q U Q I A N G E. Change. Wow. So, when when we started the um, when we started the podcast, um, they were at seven hundred thousand, and now they're at seven hundred and ten thousand. So people really really like this, and they have until the twentieth of June to uh, to to get this funded. So obviously it will be funded. And right now, if you don't want to spend too much money, uh, they still have some limited December agent watches available for as low as one hundred and fifty dollars. No tax required. Um, and the MSRP for this watch is looking to be around 250 bucks. So if you want to save yourself $100, which I do personally, um, I just have to wait for my next check um, to make sure I have it uh, by the 20th of June, then uh, that's what you're going to want to do. So yeah, go ahead, check it out at kickstarter.com, but make sure you look at it through lazytechguys.com first before you go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. All right, now for our next subject, if you happen to live in this place called Florida, or no, anyway, so if you're living in Florida or, or um, Alabama and you're a ceasefire customer, they're going to launch some. They're going to launch some 4G LTE to you very soon. Now, the prop they didn't quite say exactly when. They just said they're going to do it, and it sounds like it's going to happen soon. So these are the areas that they're going to get hit right as of right now. So we'll do Alabama first. We got uh, Mobile and Baldwin. We got uh, what was it Mobile Pit. Pictured, uh, Sarah Lynn, and yes, if I butcher these, uh, I am, well, never mind. Sarah Sume, Chickens, uh, Chicksaw, uh, Daphne, Fairhope, Foley, Gulf Shores, Loxy, Orange Beach, Summerdale, Robertsdale, Silver Hill, and Sp Sp Spanish Fort. Woo, Bueller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bueller. <laughs> now for Florida, we're not done yet. Uh, this is the fry part here. We got uh, Gulf Breeze, Destin, Fort Walden Beach, Mary Ether, Sin 
Cinco Bayou, interesting, uh, five beach. Anyway, no, in um, Miramar Beach. So if you happen to be in one of those areas, there's a good chance you'll be getting some 4G LTE, which means two things. Your internet speed is going to go faster, and your battery is going to die faster also. It's going to be a great change. Congratulations. <laughs> it's such a cynic. <laughs> it. It's true. Yo, we got to die, man. I'm going to die. <laughs> Oh god! <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. All right, so dude, I heard there's some sickness with some nexus assist, nexi, nexus I, si, something like that coming, right? Down with the sickness with the white nexus four. LG is finally officially announced this bad boy. Um, it actually made an unofficial appearance on Google I/O, and um, according to the Google reps, it's they said that it should be hitting United States shores by the. 10th of June. And that's pretty much in line of what LG said. They actually announced this phone earlier today on December, sorry, December, on May 28, 2013. And between the original Nexus 4 and the white Nexus 4, the difference is that it is a color white. That's it. That actually, the oh tagline. Oh, dude, this is huge. This the tagline itself is actually the same popular smartphone, different color. And so there's no, <laughs> there's no LTE, there's no upgraded screen or anything like that. Um, but you know what? I've talked to a lot of people that have the Nexus Four, and they wouldn't have any other phone if they could, if they if they had the chance. Hey, so I quick. don't. Oh, ugh, I was just gonna say, um, again, this this really points home to Google knowing what they want Android to be in terms of an operating system, and LG actually building really good hardware. So um, yeah, in regards to uh, the actual shipping date, it's gonna hit on Hong Kong tomorrow, May 29th, and then. Uh, Asia, uh, the other parts of Asia, um, United States, Canada, and North America altogether um, in the coming weeks. So we'll let you know when it co goes into the Google Play Store, but uh, the price should probably be around the same. I think $250, something like that, without contract. And it will only work on AT&T, T-Mobile, sorry, Verizon, and Sprint. You know, what I was, think what I was thinking was Google must, you, as you say, Google must really know their direction because – they are releasing or having phones that are released that are not LTE at all, and they're putting up Wi-Fi balloons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just wonder if Google is just thinking like, you know what? We're not going to worry about this, AT this uh, stuff because most people are going to be on Wi-Fi when they want to do all this big data stuff, and we will eventually get more networks out there for them to have it. So. I don't know, you know, just... I didn't realize how much I used Wi-Fi until I got onto this whole uh... – I lose me losing my data plan, and ever since I lost my data plan and really using Wi-Fi, I use it a lot, and I don't really use the 4G data connection connection as much as I thought I did. Yeah. I thought I listened to a ton of music when I'm not in the house. Apparently, I don't. Well, <laughs> so well, good for well, me. What you need to do is turn your Wi-Fi off for a whole weekend. Oh god! And I'm extreme. Now. No, no, no. Seriously, like, here's what I did. Like, when I went out went on vacation last the uh, the other month, I um, I killed my wife. I killed my band. Just destroyed the amount of bandwidth I have. And the secret to doing it is watching HD Warrior videos over and over again. <laughs> I'm cool you about watch, knowing you the watch secret. Golden State Warrior highlights over and over again I'm on the internet. Right with Everything that. is in high def, and I'm watching it 20 times over. Look at this dunk! Look at this dunk! Look at this dunk! And then I'm realizing. Oh wait, those are full motion video playing over and over again. So yeah, YouTube and Netflix would destroy it. Just go, just go on the road and watch some Arrested Development. Yeah, that would destroy your bandwidth real quick. So, Have you seen the new season yet? Every last episode. All right, we'll talk about it after the show. Have you seen now, it all? I'd have. Yeah. All right, let's get this thing rolling. Come on, let's get this off. Okay, 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 okay. No. <laughs> So LG's got a white Nexus 4. That's awesome. But there were some rumors saying that LG was working on a Nexus 5, and LG quickly squashed that. Actually, in their words, um, they actually they basically said that they didn't need a, a successor to the Nexus 4. That they they said something along the lines of, uh, "We don't need another market leader." Um, if I, if I remember reading that correctly somewhere on like Phone Arena. But that was a little surprising to me. I mean, I would think a company like LG that isn't really big in the Android ecosystem, like they're kind of third. Like there's there's Samsung, there's HTC. I guess it's a, it's a tie between like LG and Motorola. Um, but yeah, uh, LG it doesn't look like they're going to be working on a stock Android or another Nexus for quite some time. 
but with that being said, you know, the LG Optimus G Pro, uh, which is a gorgeous phone on AT&T, is uh, hopefully doing a lot better than their previous devices in the past. So, yeah. So if you want to get a stock LG Android phone, right now would be the Nexus 4, and a white one's coming to your door or to your house soon or wherever. Wherever you are, it's coming soon. Go it's get one. Find you. Yeah, we'll find you. You still have to pay for it. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, you've had to pay for it to find you. Even better. All right, that works. That works as well too. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Now you know, Android obviously is just on the up and up, but it's not the only operating system out there. Firefox announced the Firefox OS, or rather, Mozilla announced the Firefox OS uh, a little while back. And they had one device, or maybe two devices, one from ZTE, another one from some other company. Um, but Firefox and Foxconn are announcing a new device on the 3rd. Now, you can really, really wonder, knowing that Firefox and uh, F- Firefox and Foxconn are putting together, and we essentially, this means that they're making a hardware. It makes you wonder, um, one, Apple does this already, and they create this thing called the i. Phone, I think, yeah, the iPhone. Um, iPad, maybe. T- yeah, yeah, iPad also. Yeah, it works great for them. Uh, them Google, <laughs> Google is contracting out to their other main fa- their other OEMs. They're going to um, to um, L- LG, like we mentioned a minute ago, and Samsung and other companies to do these uh, Nexus phones. So maybe uh, Mozilla is just looking to go directly to the source and say, you know what, we're going to do it like Apple. We're going to go straight to the source. And they have a lot of partners. Like right off the bat, this part, this thing here is supposed to. I guess we're supposed to know a little bit more on the 3rd, Monday the 3rd, so we'll know before the next show. We'll be talking about it. But they have partners in LG, um, Atkel, T-Mobile, and quite a few different other people from around the world. So this is going to be another OS on the market. This isn't going to be an Android phone. This is going to be the new Firefox OS or or OS and Firefox for Android. I don't know. It's something weird. We'll know in the future. Either way, um, Firefox OS, it's coming. We should hopefully know more soon, and it looks like they may be having their own OEM phones. Now, do you think this is what they really need, Tony, to kind of get going and get their stuff kick-started? <laughs> um, is, like, their own OEM kind of, like, phone to show this is how you do it kind of a thing? When they showed it back at, I think it was Mobile World Congress, um, they didn't really show too much about how the app development would be, and it kind of seemed a little silly since um, some of the Android apps would be ported over, you know, um, and then also there was a lot of, like, HTML5 web apps would would be built to accommodate for Firefox OS. And it was a little bit of backwards thinking. Like, web apps, nobody really wants to do web apps. Most people are more content with downloading the app. Like, if I were to go to Facebook, I would download the Facebook app versus the web app that they work ever so hard on and no one's using it right now. So the, the, that, the fact that Firefox is kind of, you know, building a platform on, on HTML5, it could work. Um, I think it comes down to developers, and I think it, it also comes down to like what the hardware is going to look like. Foxconn, obviously, they have the backup, they have the backdrop, they have the the um, they, they have the know-how on how to build, you know, a proper hardware and whatnot. And some of these names that are in the partners, you know, T- Telefonica, T-Mobile, LG, Qualcomm. I mean, they're they're these are big names. So, um, I I don't know if this means that. They are going to build a Firefox OS device for LG and ZTE um, with a Qualcomm chip in there. I don't know if that's what that means exactly, but I guess we'll find out, like you said, on the third. Awesome. All right. Um, And last but not least, Samsung is poised to hold an event on June 30th in London at Earl's Court. Been there before. Um, on the, uh, did I say June 30th? I meant June 20th. On June 20th. I just want to make sure you said Earl's Court. You mean Earl, you know, the guy with the basketball courts or Earl's Court? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> dude, it's Where, Earl's Courts, dude. Where's my crickets? Oh, come on. Crickets. No, no. Keep, no. Keep, give me, keep, come keep. on. No, no, no. This is what I'm going to give myself. No, I'm joking. Okay, so. That's for me. All right, fine. Off. This is called the Samsung Premier 2003 <laughs> event. Now they also they, they're saying that it's going to be an event for both Native and Galaxy. So that means two things: Android and Windows Phone. 
So that's pretty cool. Um, it's interesting that they, they call it a Samsung premiere uh, instead of an unpacked event. A lot of their events that they've had in the past that have just been Samsung, for Samsung, by Samsung, about Samsung, um, have been an unpacked event. Now, their last unpacked event was a flop in my, in my, my eyes because mm -hmm. uh, although it's a great phone, we don't need the Broadway sing-along. Um, although Broadway can be kind of fun sometimes. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, this is going to be um, live streamed on YouTube, on Samsung Mobile's YouTube page. And they said it's at 1,900 hours. So here in the United States, we are, what, eight hours away? So that is, um, yeah, so that's at, uh, what, 1 o'clock, something like that? Or, or 1 o'clock our time or, two, or, or noon, something like that. But in any case... Uh, we don't really know exactly what they're going to be unveiling, but we can guess that it's going to, at least for the Galaxy side of it, the Galaxy Tab 3, the Galaxy Note 3, not so <laughs> soon. The Galaxy Note 3, that's a, this is a little soon for that. Um, for the Aative side, it, in the third pane of the invite, it looks like a really thin computer, so it could be the Aative tablet, laptop, uh, Ultrabook, I don't know. Um, and then another rumor that's circling around is the Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom, which is the camera, like the Galaxy camera, with a phone component that looks very similar to an S4. So if that's true, that's going to be crazy balls. And I hope they don't do that because that just seems really silly. But hey, that's why they don't pay me the big bucks to build these phones. And yeah, I said crazy balls. No, I'm more. I did, when you described the phone, I was like, Oh, oh you don't care about crazy God. balls? No, no, no. Just like, well, I'm I'm in a hundred percent agree agree with you with crazy balls on that one. All right. Is that Q I Z B A L L Z? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So, of course, I realized that I don't remember. So I kind of realized I don't know what order we're doing the next topics in because I didn't note that. So I'm going to let you introduce the next one, and then you turn it to me if it's mine, or you take it and run with it yourself if it's yours. This is all you, buddy. Mr. Tim Cook says right. that he has no yeah. problems about Apple apps on Android. Yeah, so check this out. So I, so I was reading this, and this is absolutely proof. Oh, by the way, we're on the updates and apps sections, everybody. Now we're going to talk about updates and applications. Sorry, we updates and apps. This is what we talk about. Yeah. Applications. <laughs> we need an '80s rock voice. Gosh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Come on, it would be awesome if we had an '80s rock guy. No, I'm, just, I'm just thinking. I'm just yeah, thinking. I'm gonna uh, say, I thought it'd be totally cool. I was like, you give me ver mental crickets, and I'm like, dude. No, no mental crickets. I'm just imagining a whole sea of people with lighters. <laughs> like, yeah. Dude, Sorry, we haven't, we haven't seen the Wireless Weekly anyway. Anyway, so so in the in the string of a very slow news day, especially after the Xbox One event last week, which ate up <laughs> all the news stories all week long, and it's still top one of the top uh, search terms on Google Plus, I find. Um, <laughs> Tim Cook was at talking at All Things D, the D11 conference, and he was talking about different things like the APIs, phablets, and all this stuff that going on. And by the way, I still hate that word. Um, but one thing that he mentioned, we talked about was, you know, <laughs> to quote, sort of like, do the right thing and why. Why ain't there, why ain't there no um, Apple apps on my Android phone? Well, Apple's not against it. They don't have any problem with it. They don't mind. It's just that technically they... Um, it just doesn't make sense for them to do it right now. I mean, the quote from Cook is exactly, we have no religious issue with doing that. If we thought it made sense to do that, it, we to do that. So in other words, he's saying, we don't make enough money doing it and we don't get anything out of it. So that's the only reason why we haven't done it. Tony, I, I, I agree with that. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I think though, if, if they were to open up iTunes, that would be huge. Yeah, it would it would thin reason, but they should have done it a while ago before Google Play really got like situated. Because well, right yeah, now, now they're really late to that part. I mean, they have Google Play Music and streaming radio, and supposedly Google's working. Well, we're we'll talking about it later. But supposedly Google's working on an an iOS app for Google Music. So, yeah. 
you know, but we got alternatives for that coming in the show. So if you're yes, looking for an iOS alternative, stay tuned. But stay no, tuned. no, but I, I just stay tuned. Well, you want that? You got to remember that. <laughs> stay, stay tuned. tuned. <laughs> stay tuned, dude. <laughs> um, one thing that um, I also wondered and noticed is that Apple services aren't really all that great in the grand scheme of things <gasps> compared to comparable services Sorry. out there. <laughs> I mean, you, I mean, there's you, nothing... you just made MG Siegler like, like wake up. There's a disturbance of the force. Yeah, I, <laughs> it's like I someone don't said care. something bad. You know, like iTunes is a solid service, and I really do wish that was on the Android platform. And the main reason why is because I don't uh, like iTunes at all. No, the main reason why I want iTunes on the main on the platform is because I get iTunes cards still because people, my family knows I buy oh, Macs, yeah. but I don't buy shop on iTunes, so they keep buying me iTunes cards. You They're can like, oh, buy Apple. Mac apps, right? I don't want to buy Mac apps. Okay, I, fine. It's like it's you can give me the cards then. Yeah, no, um, I'm gonna buy you know music that it's not things so I can get on my the Google Play Store. But the point is, I. If it, if it was part of it, I probably would have had no reservations using that card already because I knew whatever I bought would work on my phone and I wouldn't be tripping over it. And I knew I'd have it at home. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It's just, I wish that the iTunes would come over just because it would like be the last little element of something that I'm already pretty deep in because I've used it years ago for so long and I have a lot that's already in it that it would be nice to bring some of that back to what I currently have. But at the same time, I'm not really losing any sleep over it. Yeah, I think you know, you you, you uh, hit it hit a home run when you said you know Apple isn't making enough and probably if, even if they brought it over to Android they they definitely they still wouldn't be making enough because they don't really have any apps at least mobile apps that make people really really want the iPhone they have an ecosystem specifically because of. Um, some good apps, uh, but also, like I said, their music and video, um, which which Google right now does. They're competing against, obviously, with their streaming radio. But I think if you have been downloading your music from iTunes and you want to make the move over to Google, or at least Android for that matter, um, it, it it might be a little hard to you know cut that cord or cut that umbilical cord to Apple because you, you just you're just so set in that way and it well, would be nice to be able to have that transfer over without having to pay the additional DRM fee to unlock it and move it over to an Apple device or to a non-Apple device rather I was just going to say is like if you if you bought a lot of music and it's all copy protected yeah there's not much you can do except for burning it on CD and then importing it back in other than that you loopholes the that loophole has been around forever if anyone I know I'm just saying that, loopholes beyond, beyond that it's like there's I mean it's like they they've been selling un un DRM music there for a while now so a lot of the music that's out there and available doesn't have DRM anyway so those people you still can easily buy on iTunes and bring it over it's just that you have to buy it on iTunes export it out of, out of, export the file out of iTunes and import it into the Google stuff and get into that ecosystem it'd be nice if it was already on the phone ready to go just like download there it is move on anyway that's yeah but I'm, but but what I'm saying is in regards to like apps that Apple built oh, the rest of the stuff they do is whatever like yeah. maybe iPhoto yeah. But you know, they just you know what? But you the apps what? that Google built, like Maps, YouTube, like something like that, you know, they have properties that people want like every if I had, want to have access everywhere. And you know, it's it, it's good that Google is you know putting their apps in other ecosystems, but they're still limiting it. Unfo unfortunately, you know, for the other big two out of four. Uh, which is Windows, Windows and BlackBerry, but uh, so, we'll, we'll we'll get into one of the big ones with with Microsoft later on. So real quick, if you disagree with us, or if you think there is some app on that Apple makes that is unbelievable that him and I are not getting, shoot us a letter. I mean, shoot us an email. Comments at lazytechguys.com. I'm curious to know what yeah. app do you out there listen to that if you're an iPhone user that Apple makes. Not one that's made by a third party, because if it's made by a third party, it eventually will probably go to the Android platform anyway. But what app, what app does Well, we don't know that for sure, but yeah. Most likely they will. Um, <laughs> dude, ever, ever note, ever note did. Ooh. Anyway. Come on, dude. Some people really rub that in the face as if that was a big deal. Anyway. So, <laughs> anyway. Um, if you if there's an app made by Apple that you think should be in there, let us know. Say the word, shoot us an email, and I want to know. I really want to know what is it. Otherwise, I just 
it just I don't see them getting much out of it. So whatever. Now one app that made it to Android first um, and now has made it to iOS second is an app for Verizon Wireless customers. So if you're not a Verizon Wireless customer, just turn away and look out the window. Hang on, let no, me turn the camera off. Camera no, off. Right. My microphone off. Hello? Okay. <laughs> Verizon's new Verizon Cloud. Now, Verizon has their own... Wait, what do they call up, it? Verizon? Cloud? Verizon Cloud. Oh, I thought they called it Verizon Cloud. I was like... They, Verizon they, Cloud? Oh, no. That's what I thought you... I was like, wait, what? They didn't call it that. I was like, anyway, okay. No. The Verizon Cloud <laughs> is now available for iOS users. At the end of last month, it was uh, open to Android users on uh, for Verizon customers. And essentially, it's a backup. It's like a, it's an overblown backup assistant that backs up your contacts, text messages, call logs, um, uh, f- photos, videos, things like that. And you can get 500 megabytes for free. But if anyone out there knows or uses backup like Box or Dropbox or uh, SugarSync, you know 500 megabytes is nothing. So if you want to bump up a little bit more to, I don't know, let's say 125 gigs uh, you can spend ten dollars a month for that amount, but they offer other packages in between then. Um, but yeah, starting well, I guess last week on May twenty fifth, iOS customers can now download the app through the iTunes Store right now. So for um, stuff and giggles, let's go ahead and check it out. <laughs> so here it is on iTunes uh, in the iTunes website, and it's free. It's free to download, and oh, they just did an update to it. And, oh, wow, awesome app, impressive, no text saving. Oh. It's one star. Anyways. Oh, not, not, not a bad start, not, a ba- not bad for a start, but not seeing the ability to save text messages. Well, this is supposed to have the ability to save text messages, so there. Uh, maybe maybe they, need, uh, they need to update it. But, yeah, it's, um, you know... My whole thing about cloud backup and stuff, I understand a company has control over that to a certain degree, and I'm somewhat okay about it. You know, I have my Google Drive and I have Dropbox and stuff like that. I don't know if I want. I, I don't know if I want my carrier to have it, and the reason behind that is because what if I switch carriers? Then it's just like that much harder for me to, you know, remove all that stuff from from Verizon's cloud and put into Sprint's cloud or AT and T's cloud. Um, or in the situation that, you know, working here with these tech guys, I have three different carriers. So, like, am I going to have all the three different So that's why I just use Google Drive and Dropbox, personal and work, and just make it simple, and that's it. So what was that Google Drive password? I'm joking. So. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, that's awesome. I'm so happy you have the two counts and... One is for personal, and I'm just joking. Anyway, so that is awesome. Great update. But you know what? That is not the only update for iOS that's coming or that is, or that has came that is awesome. You know what app this is? Google Plus. Anyway, so check this out. So if you happen to be one of the few iOS users who um, liked Google Plus and, or you heard about the uh, new features that they put in here, including auto enhance, and yes, Auto Awesome, which is <laughs> that is pretty. Ooh, that's the name. Um, then yeah, there's an update for the Google Plus app that is out there that will finally that will make your phones compatible with this feature. Now this is not all iPhones, of course. This is version 4.4 and no, actually, excuse me, this is for iPhones who are running version six and higher. The um, the update will give you Auto Awesome and Auto Enhance features. Auto Enhance pretty much will kind of do the brightness and features to kind of and make sure your f- picture looks as good as it can be. Auto Awesome will take a bunch of shots. Like if you're taking a similar shot of things happening, it'll put them, make it like a, a <laughs> make sure I say this right, a GIF out of them all and get them all together, which I still think it should be GIF, not GIF. Um, I don't care what the guy who made up says. Um, the wow. update, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it should be GIF. It really should be called GIF, not a GIF. But anyway, whatever. I hear you, owner of GIFs. Um, Another thing that they've actually added are this. So the thing is actually going to be doing some auto hashtagging to make sure that they know about the auto awesome. That's the reason why it's been such a big thing on Google Plus already. There's so much auto awesomeness happening there. Auto awesome. <laughs> yes. That's what we're doing, Google Plus. <laughs> now, it also does something unique. It also takes the messaging part of Google Plus and it changes it to renames it to Hangouts like they did on the Android platform already. And that's going to be the new name for it. And last but not least, all this is free. 
If you like a Google account, you have an iOS phone, go ahead and get this update. You'll catch, you'll be on near parity to what the Android folks have as far as this app goes. And yes, it is very fun. It is very cool. And it's very well done. So go ahead and download it. And check it out. Check it out. So, um, <laughs> Have you have you started using some of the new features on Google Plus, or like maybe inadvertently using the hashtags, or have you noticed hashtags like anything like that? Yeah, actually, so I started using some of the hashtags for the fact for like I don't know for the heck of it, and I noticed that periodically I look at it like you know what the hashtag is what I'm most interested in, and other times I just go to the trending and I just go to Auto Awesome because Auto Awesome is trending every single night. Every night it dips down, and at the end of the night it goes to the top trending thing. And then at the end of the night, the next day it goes down, and at the end of the night it goes popular again. It's it's amazing, dude. Like here's like for people who are watching, here's an auto awesome. Some guy, some guy made of a tree blowing in the wind, and all it says is, "Oh, I tried auto awesome. This is great." <laughs> so yeah, I've tried a couple of the features. The hashtags are somewhat like somewhat convenient, I guess, but beyond overall, man. Eh, eh. It, I can't say it's made things worse. Is that? Oh, that's a nice little plate-looking place. The Millennium Park Concert Hall in Chicago. Holy crap! The place. Uh, yeah, Millennium Falcon. I was like, what? Where? The Millennium Park. Fa yeah. So this is up in uh, Chicago. For the people out in Illinois, I'm pretty sure they know all about this thing already. But yeah, that looks sick. Actually, crazy looking. All right. Well, while Sean admires the Millennium Falcon Park that in is Chicago, not the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> anyway. Well, while Sean wishes that it was the Millennium Park Fal Falcon Park. Okay. <laughs> Evernote has released a new app. Um, or it's not a new app, but it's a new feature to the Evernote app. Um, and the feature is rightly coined Reminders. So um, we have a lot of things that we do on a daily basis, and sometimes we just can't remember to do everything. And sometimes you'll put it like a reminder to go to the bank in your calendar. Like if you know you get off work at 4 o'clock, you go to the bank at 4.15. But the calendar isn't really meant to remind you to do things. It's to let you know that you know between this block of time, you're busy. So Evernote, which is a great note-taking app, and if you haven't downloaded it yet or haven't tried it out, it's free to download, and I do highly recommend it. Um, they're new um, feature called Reminders is a nifty way for you to actually keep updated with all the things across the board on um, on your mobile devices as well as um, the Mac Mac and web versions of uh, to you know to you know I guess to uh, get tasks done so I have used color note in the past which is a task taking uh, feature or there's also uh, Gina Trapani. She had a, t a task taking uh, task taking app that I tried it out for a little bit to, so, to support her. But because I use Evernote on a daily basis to take notes and everything, I want to give this a shot. And I tried it out on my on my iPad because I don't have an iPhone. Um, and I also tried it on the web version. And you know, it's it's just really nice, clean, easy to use. It's it's very user friendly. And um, you, you can set a date and a time if you want. Uh, it's a, there's a little alarm kind of icon that pops up. And um, it can even email you if you were a type of individual that had Evernote on their desktop but not on their phone. Um, and you still want to be reminded to complete these tasks. You would still have access to them. So, yeah, try it out. Try it out for free, Evernote. Uh, go to Evernote.com and download the free app. We're just... Go to Evernote.com and use their free uh, use the web app, and uh, let us know what you think. Hey, check this out! Opera released a desktop Windows and Mac uh, browser today. So there you go. Yeah, the Opera. Yeah, I'm trying to download it right now. Yeah. Okay. And they got a new mail client. So I looked on. Sorry, just on one. So here's it. It's crazy as this. So I was on Google Plus a minute ago, as you saw me. Um, and one of the hashtags was something, so I clicked on the hashtag, and it went somewhere else. And I was like, oh, what's this? And I clicked on it, and then it says, Opera is a top trending term. And like, why is Opera a top trending, uh, trending term? And I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, wait, it's a new, wait, what? Oh, a new browser. Oh. <laughs> and like, and just like on Android, I sent it directly to Chrome, and then I just shut it down, went open, open a new tab over here, go other devices, there it was. Link's ready to go. 
I, there's, dude, they, they did such a good job on that. It's so convenient. Yeah. I, Sorry, I, it, Opera. It, if you can do that on, on Opera. Okay. Yeah, I, Chrome. That, it Chrome. Makes, it, you know what sucks, though? Chrome, so uh, Google has stopped supporting Chrome on um, operating systems 10.58 and earlier for Mac OS, which is what I have on my laptop because it's an old laptop. Oh. So there's no more Flash on Chrome, which forces me to use Safari. And I hate it. Hate Safari. Yeah, no, no, I, I don't mind Safari. I just hate it because I, I like Chrome so much that oh. everything else is just like, eh. I know that I know that car is only a Lexus, but I mean, geez, <laughs> it's not my Lamborghini. I, mean, I had a Ferrari. Yeah, dude. I want it back. Exactly. So check it out. If you're on the iOS platform and you want Google Music, well, we don't have a Google Music app for you. I hate to tell wah, you that. Oh, uh, yeah. But guess what? G Music has got your back. Now, G Music is a company that's made many different musical apps. I noticed that they, they tend to make stuff that are missing from the Google platform. Like I noticed they had another G Music app for before Google Music really made an impression on the Android platform. And now they're coming to they're coming to the iOS platform with an app that costs, I believe, about five bucks. But this will give you access to your Google Music library and uh, be able to well, this is what you'll be able to do. You'll be able to do things like create radio stations. You can add music to the app directly. You get a full EQ and you get playlist support. You even get, uh, you can use it with the um, different kind of like app radio stuff from Pioneer. Um, it uses like universal iPad app support. So it's kind of, it works in there overall. Has AirPlay support. They're saying it loads very fast, but most importantly, it has offline support and a recently added playlist. It does features in here that are really good. And by the way, no, I'm sorry. It's not $5. It's only $2 for this. So, if you like Google Music, and I, it's a pretty cool service, especially for, for the most part, being free for your own personal stuff. And, well, if you want to stream stuff, you can stream stuff. That's a whole different deal. But I don't know. It's pretty good. It's called The app is called, make sure I get it right, G Music, and it's small G Music. Big G Music. As I see. G Music. Sort of like a, a big S, small A, big D, <laughs> small A, small N, big I. No. Dang, how does she do it again? An LA story, Sandy, look it up. Anyway, so this is pretty good for for iOS users. Go ahead and check it out. Get it. Yeah, I was um I was trying it out on mine. You know, two bucks. Who cares? And uh, it's not bad. It's it it's not a perfect stream. The quality isn't you know two fifty six. It's maybe like one twenty eight. Mm -hmm. Um, even though Google streams at two fifty six, like this third party, I guess it goes through some other third kind of compression rate, and it just lowers it a little bit. But for what it is, I, I'm actually you know very happy with it. So um, there are other free options out there. There's there's actually one that's actually called App for Google Music Free. That's the name of it. App for Google Music. Um, what was that? Okay, but um, yeah, it's it's it's. I wouldn't say it's as good as this one by G Music, which um, is um, you know, gives you a lot more features than app yeah. for Google, which is the the biggest thing is going to be the radio. It allows you to stream the new all access radio, which the other ones that you might find do not. So yeah, go try it out. Let us know what you think. Hey, real quick here, it's theme from LA Story. Big S, small A, small M, big D, small E, big E. <laughs> That's the, the woman's name. It was a joke to Steve Martin and one of the and Sarah Jessica Parker. It's scene. Big S, small A, small M, big D, small E, big E. Because no one spells their names in LA right anymore. They all have to have different letters and different capitalizations all around. So, a few people, old school people, and old people like me who know that movie. Yep, there it is. Good movie. Yeah, it's actually a really good movie. It's a good movie. Cute, but very good. <laughs> um, let me see here. Next is da da da. Oh, that's right. Yeah, happy together. I won't miss a cube. All right, so Unity Engine, right? Or am I doing the happy together? Sorry, I didn't take any of the notes on the end of this show. Sorry, Tony. Am I doing Google and Microsoft work together, right? Yes. Yeah. That's what I thought. And then Unity Engine. Thank you very much. All right, so, guys, this is what we've all waited for. This is the moment we've all wanted. This is when we want people to actually get together and work out their differences and bring things together. You know who's doing that together? You know who's doing that? That would be Microsoft and Google. Yes. I, 
I even brought this song for them. Here we go. No matter how they toss the dance, it had to be. They earned it. The only one for me is you. Yeah. And you Google and Microsoft. So happy together. They are really happy together because they're making a YouTube app, everybody. Yes. For Windows 8. YouTube app. It's great. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> so Microsoft and Google are going to co-develop the Windows 8 apps. This way they can end all this bickering between ads and what they should do and shouldn't do and all that kind of good stuff. So get, if you're on the Windows 8 platform, sit tight and relax. Yes, what, there will be a full, complete YouTube app that will be certified by both companies, and they both will like it in the near future. So sit tight. It's happening. It's really happening. <laughs> all right, Tony. Yeah, yeah I, go. good good times. Yeah, <laughs> that's not much more. I was like, all right, there it is. All right, and then you're giving me the last one, right? Yeah, it's all you, buddy. All right, so if you believe in love, no. oh come on, it's the link, right? No, dude, don't do that. Oh, the link's not right. The share song, that'd be just. Hey, the link is not right. I know. Yeah, I saw that. Yes. Yeah, we're gonna have there's some things that are gonna be happening here. The Unity engine is actually gonna be a good deal. It's actually gonna be free for any developers who make games on the Android and iOS platform. So what is the Unity engine or what are these game engines that I speak of? Well, game engines are pretty much like a it's like a toolbox of tools that people use when they're so tools that they use when people are well well creating games. So it's sort of like they have WordPress for uh, websites. This is sort of like tools and things. So the Unity engine, they normally would have cost like $800 to get this privilege. So it gives you $800 or something just to be able to get any kind of started, any kind of thing started. Well, you know, it's going to be free. Now, this isn't quite for everybody. If you are making over $100,000 a year in last year or something like that, then yeah, you will still be paying some fees for it. But overall, if you are using the Unity engine, you're just now starting, that $800 fee to get you started and using it is gone. Now you can go ahead and get a shot at it. And guess what? This is for Android and iOS users, and the same deal is going to be extended to BlackBerry and Windows Phone users in the near future. So Woo! this might be a really good platform to start making games on because at this point, you know you're going to be getting it out to as many platforms and easily. So go ahead and check it out. And this is the Unity Engine. If you want to find out more about it, you know our website is LazyTechGuys.com, and the company is Unity, and I think this Unity Technologies, I think it's the name of the company. So let's go ahead and check them out and you know if you're interested in making games for your mobile platform. All right. Well, thank you very much for that one, Sean. Um, I don't know how many times I've played a game and it says Unity. I'm like, okay. I kind of know who those guys are. Really? That's because you play a lot more mobile games than I do. Me, for me, I always see, because I play desktop games, Havoc, which is yeah, a, yeah. And I see Unreal, of course. Cause okay, everywhere. of course, yeah. Um, and then I see when you play EA games, you see different ones like the Frostbite and the other ones like that. But anyway, <laughs> yep. Well, that is pretty much it for the Wireless Weekly of this oh, week. We, I know. No. no. Oh, God. Fuck. Uh, All right. We could talk about the blue phone on, on Verizon, but that's kind of silly. We could talk about uh, Tobias's way of... No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you better end this show. <laughs> go get Netflix. Watch the show. Well, you get it. You know, go. No. Okay. Yeah, see? That's bizarre. I'm done. I'm not going to say any. I'm not going to spoil the rest of development for anybody. All right. Well, thank you very much for listening and watching, guys. Sean, why don't you go ahead and let everybody know how they can get in contact with you? All right. Many different ways. Um, my comedy act goes every single Tuesday <laughs> at the Wireless Weekly Night. <laughs> so, um, you could, there's different ways you can find information about me. One, Twitter, LTG Sean is the name I go by. Um, you can also uh, email me, Sean at LazyTechGuys.com, or just comment at LazyTechGuys.com if you want to reach all of us. That way, so you don't be like, I don't want to email them directly. I want to email everybody. Go ahead. It's all good. It's all good. I'm going to see it anyway. I see them all. Mm. I see um, everything. Yeah. Also, I happen to be a musician who happens to be getting some music out here in the very near future. Um, it's going to be an eight-song album. If you want to check out my first track and a couple of fun remixes that I did of other popular songs, you go to my SoundCloud account. If you look up Sean Wilburn, S-E-A-N, 
Wilburn, W-I-L-B-U-R-N. You go ahead and find my account and check out some of the music I've done there. So I encourage you to go do that and share. And if you like it, stay tuned because there's a whole lot more coming in the near future that I've already finished. I'm just trying to figure out how to get some money to get it out there quickly. Give Sean money. Don't give me money like that. Okay. How about Don't this? give Sean when money. My music, when my music is out, check out my album. And if you like it, buy it. Here buy it right. legally. Yeah, that's what I mean. I'm not saying download it illegally. No. All right. And as for me, you can um, best way to find everything about me would be to go oh. to about.me slash Teen Ninja 3000 oh. or like right here, um, LTG Tony. That's yeah. another way. You could just tweet me. Um, make sure that you go to lazytechguys.com in the near future because we are giving away these guys what for are the Galaxy, guys? The what Galaxy are guys? S4 cases. What? Really? Dang. We are insane here. What is up with us, dude? And this is, we're not giving away the phone, but we're giving away the case. So, yeah. Definitely not the baby in the phone. Not the baby in the phone. She's mine. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. And as for, you know, contacting the rest of the whole crew, um, you can uh, find us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus. Our YouTube channel is Lazy Tech TV. Email us at comments at lazytechguys.com or give us a phone call at 707-722-5299. We do want to thank our sponsor, which is audible.com. Thank you very much for uh, sponsoring the whole LTG network as well as the Wireless Weekly. You guys have been great. Hope you all have a safe evening, a safe drive as you're listening to us or wherever you are. Take care. We're out.